Welcome, listener. Welcome to an episode of Double DM. Did that sound good? I, I don't know. I think even after 60 episodes, introductions still feel wrong to me every time. <laughs> anyway, in this upcoming episode, we will discuss voices. How you can create a wide range of voices so easily that it will appear like nothing to you. We talk about when to do voices and which characters should get some voice distinction, as well as why you should try to do voices for those special characters. Did you want to know more? Just check out the show notes of this episode and now sit back with a drink and enjoy the show. Bye! Execute episode 66. <laughs> All right, my lord. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Double DM. I am, as always, your host, Emil, and I am here with Niels, my co host. How are you doing? I can't complain. I got a stacked schedule today. Mm hmm. But overall, a good day. A good day. A good day. Yeah, it's been a good day so far. We're recording on Wednesday, the 27th of April. I've been starting to pack some boxes for my move. I am looking at a rather um, empty room of my childhood now. It's bringing up some weird feelings and I'm finding a lot of weird shit that I owned as a kid. So oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, that, that that's a whole different deal sometimes. I have a 10 game box of Lego classic games and we're not talking about Lego Star Wars or whatever, right? These games aren't the classics. I am talking Lego Football Mania. Oh damn. Oh, da oh damn. <laughs> and <laughs> even better it's the Danish version of it because I bought that in Denmark when we were there to visit friends. So I have it in Danish, but the games are also in German. But I have this very weird box of Lego games. I'm, I'm going to grab it real quick. So you just entertain the people. <laughs> okay. For me, I got up at six o'clock as I have to do every day now and have to work soon right after this recording until 10 p.m. So I don't need sleep anyways. Woo. And tomorrow I have to go to university for one hour. I drive three quarters of an hour for, um, there, sit in the lecture hall for one hour, and then drive three quarters of an hour back. So that will be an interesting day. So now uh, let's talk about the 10 LEGO PC Games Classic Collector Box. Oh, This damn. was, by the way, just 10 euros at the time. Oh, okay. So, so these games were a real, real deal. Huh? Mm -hmm. So the Danish have some letters that we do not have in the normal 26 letter alphabet that is known mm -hmm. around the world. We Germans do as well, but the Danish have some that I don't know. So I, I can only say that this is Ön 2 or Ön 2, um, Kim's Cool Haven. I think this is a pizza delivery simulator with Lego. <laughs> I have island extreme stunts, which I can only guess is a stunt crew on a Lego island. <laughs> now we have something that isn't even Lego. <laughs> it's Lego okay. Galidor Defenders of the Outer Dimension. And the figure on the cover isn't a Lego figure. I, I don't know what the fuck I'm looking at. But it's here. Oh, I think it's this game that I loved. Lego Racers 2, because everyone needs a Mario Kart clone at the, <laughs> these days. Obviously. Uh, Lego Loco, which is just Lego Train Simulator. My favorite. Lego Skag, which is just Lego Chess. Okay. L Lego Drome Racers. I have no memory of this game at all. <laughs> Lego Bionicle. Oh, hell yeah. Hell the video yeah. Game. Lego yeah, Bionicle, yeah. the video game. Yeah, yeah, I, I know that. Lego Creator, which was, I think, just a sandbox. <laughs> Build your own <laughs> Lego world. Okay. Okay. Lego Football Mania. Mm -hmm. This is a Lego football clone. We have FIFA, but then Lego. And I think it had also special abilities, so it was pretty fucking cool <laughs> for, for nine year old at that time, I guess. And now to the 11th game in the box, <laughs> Lego Bionicles once again. Yeah. Well, 
<laughs> I have this game two times in here. I don't know why, but this box is filled with <laughs> games. The even better part is the Lego Skag chess game has on its on its cover Lego Skag, but on the box it says Lego Chess. <laughs> so this is quality content. <laughs> <laughs> quality stuff quality stuff yeah but but finding stuff from your childhood when you mm. move is especially the stuff you didn't see i mean i, I yeah. i've also already moved the fantasy books that i own so those were on display in the room so i knew they had them though i found some games that i didn't even knew i had anymore even mm. though i could have looked at them but this box was found in oblivion <laughs> <laughs> somewhere yeah. stuffed away behind some other stuff that I probably didn't touch for like six years, but here it is. And I am loving it. Lego yep. Loco. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I enjoyed all of these games when I was a kid, I, I would... Uh, I would guess. Okay, the English description of this box says 10 of the best LEGO PC games collected in one great box. Race, build, sport, create, learn, and play. Guaranteed for hours of fun. I probably switched Islander Island 2 with Bionicle with my friend when we had both when we both had these boxes and we didn't ex I <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a connection to this friend anymore, so I can't just hit him up and can I get the island? <laughs> oh, this is great. I, I lo I'm loving this. But there also was another racer game. I think it was also a Lego game, which was so fucking cool because you could build your own tracks on it, but I don't know if it's a Lego game anymore. Oh, th this brings back memories. Okay. 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 Niels, did you have any sessions this or the past week? Uh, yes, I had mm -hmm. a session regarding titan's call oh, i thought you were talking about but, different sessions no but i had two actually yeah uh yes uh one uh that i dm'd with uh the i don't know if i have talked about this you uh, have probably talked about this yeah I don't, but i don't know how i address this group they are now called draco somnium the dream you of the dragon you did talk about those i know that name okay yeah then uh we got <gasps> no n2 is island 2 the brickstar's revenge oh <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> but I just realized that this is the same font and it's the only game with a two and it's the only game that's on the back. So N2 is Island 2. So you learn, you learn something every day. N is Island in Danish, apparently. <laughs> the more you know. The more you know. Okay, please continue, Niels. I'm sorry. Yeah, but uh, we just had some downtime activities a little getting to know the city they were in and they decided to hunt some dangerous creatures in the woods around the city wasn't that a t-rex uh it was a spy or there will be a spinosaurus but a uh. special one because it's the last of its kind in this island and your players are gonna kill it for its teeth they may try. They may die trying. Exactly. As I have this creature now, it is probably going, or in 99.9% .9 of every cases, if they would attack it right now, as they are with the things they have available, they would all be wiped out. Easy peasy. Nice. But yeah, then, uh, so just to... What is their objective, or is that something that they chose to do? Or is that they... something someone told them to do? Uh, they just chose to do this. Oh, okay. Because they have no time pressing matters to attend to right now. Mm -hmm. But they were in a circus where some people got abducted and they want to investigate that. But to do that, they have to or wanted to travel to an ally of theirs to ask about some piece of cloth they acquired within this whole kerfuffle where the people got abducted. And this um, leads right through the forest. And so they asked their ally some questions, got some information, but decided on the way back they wanted to um, make it a bit more peaceful or more safe for travelers and merchants traveling towards <coughs> their city. Because mm -hmm. they got a home there now, they basically live there now, and they are invested in the safety of their town. Mm, okay. And in the second one, I was a player. Ah. In the first session of the first campaign of a new DM, good friend of mine, and we are playing the... I think it is called Lost Mines of Van Delver, the mm. starting Lost thing. Mine of Van Lost Delver. Mine. It's only one mine. The Lost Mine of Van Delver um, as a introduction into his world because he has placed Lost Mine of Van Delver into his own 
world mm -hmm. with some tweaks and getting to know the world, getting to know our characters is Lost Mine of Endeavor and then we dive into his homebrew campaign. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, one of our players got taken out instantly without any possible way to resurrect them yet because he had, I think, 11 HP and the bugbear critted with improved critical rules and dealt, I think, about 20 three points of damage that's an insta death yeah that, that was a situation right that's one of the things if you don't want your game to be one shot kill at the beginning start at a higher level but yeah. if you play at level start at level one then you will have to deal with the fact that a crit can kill you yeah and we were all fine with this because we know that this thing that those things can happen and adventuring is a dangerous occupation so yeah we were all fine with that and it hopefully will lead to some interesting story moments further that down the line Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've had a character death in one of my campaigns fairly early on. I think it was level 4 at this point, so it wasn't just one crit, but that player took the unfortunate choice to take up the leader of a noble pack himself alone. Mm -hmm. And the leader was prepared for that and basically gunned him down too quickly. Yeah, th that might happen. With his bow. So he did gun him down, but he shot him down. And yeah, the others nearly got to him helping him but he also rolled three consecutive failed death saves which can happen but yeah and then he died and the others then had to deal with that and i think it elevated the campaign in a different way which mm -hmm. my players weren't used to because in the campaign before that no one ever died oh no someone died okay i know we had also character death there but it wasn't that early on and it was kind of a sacrifice the, the death in the first campaign was a sacrifice so it was kind of different than fuck he just died mm -hmm. um but yeah, it, it elevated the campaign in a different way. The other player, also, the player of the character is also way more happy with his new character now. He didn't want to switch or, any, or anything, but he's just more happy with what he has now. Yeah, it elevated the campaign on a different scale for us that my players didn't know before. And I think it's uh, served us well in creating a new, different atmosphere for this game. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't have anything else that happened. I have. A session coming up of a campaign that has been on hiatus for a full year now. Oh, well, okay. it, No, it would have been a year in May. So if we would have waited one more month, it would have been a full year of no tyranny of dragons for us. And we finally picked back up. We did some changes to the game uh, for us, um, especially with fist bands coming uh, coming out in that time it was also some things changed about characters and um, i allowed my players to change a bit um, because fist bands is a pretty good book that you can use to elevate your tyranny of dragons campaign obviously um, but one of the players for example left us so we are only five instead of six characters now and i'm not do not intend to put in a new player into that group because scheduling mm -hmm. already is hard enough for us but yeah we're picking back up my players are currently in water deep they just finished the horde of the dragon queen book and are now going into rise of tiamat which is gonna be for us a way different approach than the book gives because the book just gives you i think eight different adventures that you need to do in some order and then the last one is boom tiamat combat mm -hmm. and which what i'm gonna do is we're gonna ask, first of all settle down a bit from the Ty Tyranny of Dragons campaign, the cult has been not defeated, but damaged through the actions of my players. So the cult is trying to hide more and going about their plans, hopefully, and, and changing a bit. And my players are going to try to find out new things because they don't have any new information to go off right now. So it's a good place to start back up. And we will see how that goes. I'm going to, I have a long, 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 long recap of the full campaign we did before that for my players. We're going to do it in the way that they are all around in in their home that they got gift that they got uh, paid for in the home that they own in water deep they are all uh, gonna go on a drinking spree and, and and drink to their heart's desire and then get drunk and then tell stories from the campaign that happened basically and i'm just gonna i'm just gonna be the one that recaps the information for my players in a very long talk while allowing them to throw in their own uh, opinions information and um, character role play in between but it's gonna be the first is gonna be a lot of recap and then some diving in back into one of the plot points that they didn't finish yet hmm, interesting i'm excited to hear more about this yeah um i am as well to see what my players do <laughs> but i think with that i don't have anything else to talk about you don't have yeah. anything else to talk about so we should dive into our episode on voices 
If you like what you are hearing, then why not give us a follow on the platform you are listening to us right now. And why not also give us a 5 star rating and review on Spotify, iTunes or any other platform you choose to listen to us. If you wish to book ad slots that play instead of this pre-recorded audio in the episode, contact us on Twitter about our current available advertisement plans and prices. And with that, back to the episode. And with that, welcome back to the episode. Now we're talking about voices. What are voices? So what is a voice? For me, a voice kind of is everything that comes out of my mouth. Yeah. Everything that when I portray a character in my games, an NPC, a monster or whatever, even a monster has a voice. The low gurgles of... That's still a voice, kind yeah. of at least. There's not yeah. much to talk about these low gurgles of a sea monster or something, but there's still a voice. There's still something that comes out of its mouth that is transmitted through airwaves to my player's ears that they hear that adds to the immersion of the game. And, right, accents are not voices, but they still come out of my mouth in a certain voice, right? Accents are, let's call it the emphasis and connotations of the words the voices speak, right? Yeah. Accents are an addition to the voices I do, right? The voices are more baseline than accents completely. And yeah. that's why there's a clear distinction between accents and voices for me. That is, today we're talking about voices. We're not talking about voices and accents. I'm also not saying that we're going to do an episode on accents because I think an episode on accents could be very problematic if we too talk about accents that are not our accents. Yeah. I can't talk about how to do a good Spanish accent because I... First of all, do not know how a Spanish accent, accent works. And second of all, I'm not Spanish. So we will only be able to talk about the German accent in English. But just for accents, right? One of the first things, only things I can say for accents really is I don't do them, especially not in English when I play, because I already have an accent and I spend enough brain power to not let that accent through. Yeah. So I yeah. can't do another accent on top of my, at least most people describe it, accent-free English. So no accents, people. We were saying on voices because that's way easier to talk about and that's something everyone can talk about without offending anyone by making a bad accent of someone else's language. Yeah, for me, voices are more of the baseline way of communication, mm -hmm. to say the least. It's just a way you can portray different traits or feelings that your character or you yourself are mm -hmm. feeling and a way to express those. Yeah, I feel like voices are not just the words people speak, but especially how they speak those words words right yeah volume speed of talking and all of that stuff uh, resonance in the voice these things all add to a certain voice the way yeah. th how they speak their words even the fact which words they speak even though oh, the yeah. meaning of the words doesn't necessarily mean something for voices itself but do they speak in long words do they speak in short words do they have a lot of pauses do they don't make any pauses do they ask a lot of questions and all of that stuff can all be considered part of a voice yeah for me it's where the line of personality of a character and voice of a character kind of blends together yeah because the voice reflects parts yeah. of your personality to a big degree so let's talk a bit more about the ways you can do voices if you want to do voices because mm -hmm. we already touched on those a bit so first of all i often especially for my home games do not do voices mm -hmm. but i think that there are a few key things that help me in doing voices and that is identifying what i want to bring across right what feeling do i want to bring across with this voice for example in more, more of my games currently my players are talking to snake people these people draw out their s and z's and sh's and, and speak in these snake-like tones you could say they speak like snakes Something like this. And this is a very distinct voice because these people speak with these long drawn S tones. And that's one of the things that I wanted to bring across. I wanted to bring across that these people are basically snake people. This is how they speak. This is how their tongue and vocal cords developed over time. What is one of the special features of this specific voice that I want to bring across? And when I identif identify that, I try to hone in on that. So for example, they speak a lot like snakes. For other normal, for let's say more, 
more humanoid characters and less snake characters that have a no more normal voice that we as humans on real life earth use maybe a very raspy voice because they smoked a lot of cigars or something that could also be a thing yeah and you touched on especially with the snake voice there's one thing that a lot of people forget about is how much airiness you put in your voices mm. can be a huge difference so you can make it sound more wispy if you put more air or more air around mm. the words <sighs> It's more of more air without precisely forming the words. Mm -hmm. One of the easiest ways to, to do a voice, to which most people kind of attribute to the first step in creating a voice, is the pitch. Yeah. You can go very low or very high. I, I don't have a big range on that, but especially for podcasting, it all gets pushed through editing as well, so it probably sounds like shit already. As, you can also change the volume of your voice. I, I don't want to scream for the podcast. <laughs> So yeah. um, I, I need to, I can't be too loud, but I also don't want to be too quiet. But you can change a lot with these two switches or with these two scales already to create at least some distinct voices from your DMing voice. Because I think that there is actually something that I realized in myself that if I step into the DM chair and start DMing, I have a different voice than when I normally talk with my friends. Oh, hell yeah. I also have a different podcasting voice than when I normally talk with friends. That is mostly because in podcasting, I know that I need to bring across my words as precise as possible. I often fail at that. People know that. But it's still a thing that I try to. I try to articulate myself way better than when I normally talk. Because yes. that's just low chill talking with friends. Here, it's actually something other people will take value out of mm -hmm. but in gming or in dming there's also a different voice it's where i put very much more emphasis on specific words that are meant for feelings that are meant for creating immersion that are meant for giving my players points where they can draw from how they should react how they should feel and how this scene i am describing influences them yeah and i think this is another thing that a lot of people disregard often is the rhythm of your talking mm-hmm because with rhythm, you can bring across a lot of things, mm -hmm. especially about the mindset of the character you're currently portraying. Yeah, um, there's a lot of things you can play with in creating a voice. A lot of things you as a normal person easily can do as soon as you identify how to do it. And at the beginning, it might only be pitch and volume, but that's okay. These allow you still to create a million different voices, basically. Yeah, yeah, sure. They might still sound all kind of the same like you, but that's okay. Uh, your players will understand that you're not a vocal machine. You, you're not supposed to create a million different clear distinct voices like there would be a million different people talking. You're still one person. One thing you when you want to do voices for jamming for, for NPCs I think what you will have to do first is realize your jamming voice. How do I actually talk to my players? Because that voice needs to be changed, right? Yeah. It's a different from I just sit here with Niels and talk with him and then I change my voice then when I sit in the jamming chair and change my voice. There's a difference because I have a different voice altogether at that moment. Sure, it's still me as a person talking, but there's a very different mindset to how I approach talking in that moment, to how I portray talking to Niels, that I have a different voice all of a sudden. And that's a different voice I need to find so I can actually start changing that voice to portray voices for my NPCs. Yeah. And one thing that I like to use for differentiating between more knowledge-based characters and less knowledge-based, mm -hmm. so smart or dumb, dumb basically, is um, the diction. How precise do you articulate yourself? Mm -hmm. How much do you let your words m flow or not flow? So basically mumbling or very mm -hmm. precise exact pronunciation of words mm -hmm. is a fun thing to do because it is at least i like it to sometimes be a bit over precise with the pronunciation of certain words mm -hmm. i feel when you want to create a voice for an npc you somewhat have the npc prepared in your head already right yeah and i feel that's where you need to draw for your voice for example neil said are they smart then they articulate themselves better but i could also say well also my character is a noble and was very much trained 
articulating themselves better. They might not be the smartest, but they were indoctrinated or trained by a speech coach to articulate themselves well in noble courts. That's also something where I can draw the articulation from and how they articulate themselves, right? And all of these different things, you, you can think about your character and think, okay, this would probably change how they talk. And then you need to identify well, how does that change how they talk. Yeah, and especially there are some things that influence multiple parts of a voice. Some are um, not just the personality of the character you're portraying, mm -hmm. but some may be physical. For example, a big creature usually doesn't speak in a high-pitched voice. Yeah, the big creatures, since they are bigger, have probably probably a way bigger resonance uh, resonance body. <laughs> yep, they resonate more. They have a, usually a lower, deeper, louder, warmer voice. Mm -hmm. However, obviously, however, we say usually, however, you can easily also play with that and turn it on, a, on its head completely. Oh, yeah. Especially in a fantasy game or especially in a game where you're playing for fun, you can do that because it's for fun. Everyone will laugh if the big, big, big elephant robot has the most most tiny tiny mouse voice that you can make we talked about yet yeah, now for like seven six minutes about how to do voices and, and gave a lot of pointers right i want to say that both of us are not vocal experts or vocal coaches both of us probably learned this information from other people or just did this ourselves when we try to do stuff but we're not trained professionals there are actually trained professionals doing what we are doing here right now on youtube or in other podcasts probably that have a lot of more precise tips and advice for you. So if you come to this because you want to learn how to do a specific voice for your specific character, we probably can't help you, but we can tell you that it's okay even if that character voice isn't perfect and that character voice uh, and how to generally get to a character's voice. But if you want to do a specific character voice, go to someone else because they are way more precise than us in this. Yeah, they, they just know more in yeah. this regard. But Nils, we talked about how to do voices. We talked about that what voices are. But why do you actually do voices? For me personally, it's because I like to try those and it's fun for me. But they help immerse myself mm -hmm. or everyone at the table because they can just, uh, the players then can just get a better feel for the character without having to actively think about the voice they should have because mm -hmm. they are hearing the voice they are having right now in their head mm -hmm. at the table. It's just easier for them to feel the room, feel the situation and then act upon those informations. Mm -hmm. And I think it might link some memories better together with specific mm -hmm. NPCs. Yeah, I think voices just add to the character. Mm -hmm. I feel like one thing, a voice cannot be the sole personality of a character. You cannot make a voice, but don't have the character for it. You need to have the character. You don't need to have the character first necessarily. You can create the voice and then create a character towards that voice, but you need something that that voice works for. If that character is not there or is just a, just a blob of whatever in your world, it's still not gonna be good. The voice won't make the character good all of a sudden. Sure, your players might start laughing and caring about the character just for the voice reasons alone, but the character itself is still not interesting. Yeah. You need an interesting character to have your voice matter for that character. You need to have an interesting character to have the voice for this interesting character. The voice alone just doesn't do enough, in my opinion. But it yeah. adds a lot of immersion, of memorability, and of character to the character. But it just can't alone create the character. Yeah, because the voice is a reflection of what the character is. So you need the base where everything then comes from. Yeah. Either you start with the voice and create the character based on the voice, or you start with the character and base mm -hmm. the voice on that character. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, right, we, we talked about it uh, and we still didn't bring it up. It's okay to not do voices, people. It's totally okay if you're not comfortable doing voices, if you're not, in your opinion, good enough. Because I can tell you, you're good enough to do voices because there is no threshold of if, if I'm good or am I not good at it. You either do it or you don't. There is no scale of this person is good at it and this person isn't. Because it's your home game, it's for fun. It's okay to not do them because you're supposed to have fun. You're supposed to feel comfortable doing it. And if you, the voices make you uncomfortable, then 
and you don't have to do them. They are in addition, as we said now. They are not necessary to create a good, immersive or fun game, right? De definitely not. Because they can put a lot of stress on the GM or on the players when they are not feeling comfortable doing them. Mm -hmm. So, And then this comes back to player comfort. Yeah. And you need your players and yourself to be comfortable to be able to have a good, immersive and fun game. Mm -hmm. As soon as you're not feeling comfortable, you will feel stressed and your voice will crack, right? You That will add more stress and more stress and more stress. So first of all, get comfortable with it. Because before you get, before you get comfortable with it, you're not gonna do a good job with it. And again, that's okay. Do what you're comfortable with, people. That's the first step. And if you're comfortable with, okay, I want to try voices, then do it. You might not be good at first, but that's okay. There's nothing to lose. Exactly. But I think, <laughs> while we said that they are not important or necessary, I think that there's still an importance in voice distinction, or that there can be an importance in voice distinction. Having a voice for specific characters allows your players to connect that voice to a character. So if you reuse that voice all of a sudden, 10 sessions later, your players will realize, hey, that's that NPC that we talk to. Why are they here? Uh, why? What are they? What do they want from us? And all of that stuff. And your players instantly get back into this. Okay, this is a, this is the NPC we talk to, and recall the information that they have about this NPC. And that's a, that's a good thing. Why you do voices to have that distinction? Yeah, and you can turn what you just said exactly on the head. You can have a distinct character voice and suddenly change that for a plot reason because they got influenced by something, someone, or whatever. And this can mm -hmm. be re really intriguing because the aggressive character suddenly talks in a very gentle and warm way or not any aggression towards the players and suddenly mm -hmm. it is changed and this can it's unsettling not uncomfortable but it's unfamiliar yeah and, and this creates a lot of intrigue mm -hmm. and then the players want to investigate and so you can put in your plot points or quest hooks plot hooks or whatever you use mm -hmm. through voices that you created to be distinct from another yeah but again if you don't do voices you can still do distinction between characters, right? It's not that the voices limit yourself to distincting your characters. Because the easiest way to distinct between NPCs is by naming them before they talk. Now Captain Orem speaks. Mm. And instantly your players will okay that's captain orem we know this character he has been he has been our he has given us two quests and we got paid by him and he was very nice and he helped us and all of that stuff and that's the information they recall you can also do the voices for captain orem and and don't even say the name but it's easier to even do both but yeah the voice adds to the distinction adds your adds to the immersion of okay this is captain orem we know this character we know this about this character we we have this connection to this character way more easily but you don't have to right again it's okay you can also just say the name this is captain orem speaking and then do this and as soon as you're comfortable you can do the voices and you can introduce the voices and your players will always be fine with it they will always accept it how you do it because they know most players when they start don't do voices as well they also have to get comfortable with it so all your players have been at the same spot where you were right now even if either if your player listening right now and scared of how to do voices at first, everyone's been there. Because most of us probably haven't done this before. Sure, you might have a theater background, and then you have done it before. So why are you listening when I say if you how to do your first voice? Ev everyone's been doing it at some point in their life for the first time. Yeah. And that was scary. So the people that now do the voices, they have gotten over that barrier. You just have to do it as well. And you can do it as well. Yeah, it's a training process with everything else, basically. You have to train your voices to be able to be comfortable and good with them however yeah. you yourself define good voices in quotation mm -hmm. marks mm -hmm. because it's a personal thing mm -hmm. we humans are distinctly different from each other every single one of us and yeah. that is also true for our voices sure there oh, might yeah. be some voices that are very similar to another but there is a difference in everyone's voice and that also is true for the ranges your voice can do or your body can do naturally but you can train that you can train your body you can exercise your body to get better at this to get a bigger range of voices you can do you just have to do the training once again i'm not a vocal coach i can't tell you what to do to train search someone that can help you do the training but what i can tell you is that you 
you definitely can do the training. Yeah, I mean, every singer started somewhere. They weren't born with the perfect singing voice. The opera singers weren't born with those very high-pitched vocal cords. They, they weren't. They trained to get there. Mm -hmm. So this is what every singer, every actor, or whatever, every theater person does. They train the things they want to do. And that's the same with voices. So you can increase your range. You can increase the different pitches. You can increase your volume, your resonance. You know what to do to increase your resonating body. Mm -hmm. Just something that you need to do in order to get better at it. Yeah, and especially as you brought up the opera singers, right? You're also not looking to get as good as them, right? They train for 10 to 20 years to get to that point where they are at. Mm -hmm. You don't need to train for 20 years to get your voice for DMing correct. You just need to train for... A few weeks, a month or two or three to get to the point where you have the enough range to portray all the voices that you want to portray. And if you need to portray a few more, you can do more training. But you will never have to do the training like a professional because you're not looking to be a professional at this. You're looking to be a dungeon master or a game master that does, does voices. Sure, you might be a pro GM that wants to do voices or that wants to do better voices. But you're still not a pro voice actor or singer. There's still mm -hmm. a difference between those people and you. Oh, yeah. You're not looking to be a professional with your voice you're looking to be a professional at the craft you do which could be jamming but you're not a singer so you don't have to do the training like they do you just need to do a little bit of training you need to be open to trying to train to get better at this because you're not have you're not the perfect voice maker at the beginning yeah and another thing that you could do if you are not comfortable with voices at the beginning and not just want to drop the name all all out could be that you describe the way they talk and then just talk in your own voice Th that's also yeah. a thing that you could do saying that they are talk very calmly in a low pitch with a, a very distinct pronunciation and then just proceed to talk normally yourself mm -hmm. can do the th the trick for you with the distinction between the voices you were going for. Yeah, I, I agree so much, right? That's kind of how I started with this. I went, okay, this character stutters a bit and suddenly, I and then I talk normally and then suddenly I started when I said this character stutters, at the beginning I said this for my players to realize okay, this character is stuttering a bit and why is that and th this is information we need to process basically and then this became less of a description for them and more of a mindset change for me. Describing mm -hmm the voice out loud to my players at the table for me. I went, this character speaks in a hushed tone and seems to be very cautious in how they talk. And then suddenly I realized that I talked like that without my normal voice. Yeah. Right? I described the voice for myself out loud to kind of make myself do it. And that happened over time naturally. And you can do that as well. You can describe the voice. Find ways to describe the voice you want to do and then describe it before you start doing it. And then you will slowly ease into this voice you described yourself. Don't even think about it too much because you will slowly ease into it because in your brain, you already, right? Because we have an inner voice in our brain kind of has an inner monologue for most people. I know not some people don't have this inner monologue. They don't have an inner voice and just talk out loud. But many people have their brain map out the words they want to speak. Mm -hmm. And when the brain starts mapping out the words you want to speak in the way you want to speak them with the voice you just described, you will also speak them with the way that your brain mapped out. Which yeah. is a very cool trick for people uh, when they suddenly realize that they can trick their brain into doing the voice they want to do because they can't do the voice, but just they had this mental barrier that, can I do the voice? Yes, you can. You just need to trick your brain into doing the voice for you. Which sounds weird because we are our brains, right? Our brain is everything in us we just the flash sack that holds the brain up <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and uh, one thing that you could do as well is a more physical aid for mm -hmm. that if you have for example a character that is very arrogant with a puffed out chest then sit yourself in the chair like this character mm -hmm. would and your body automatically adjusts these parts of the voice that you wanted to portray mm -hmm. in the way they physically appear because physical influence influences the voice heavily oh yeah posture and 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 even gestures help yeah. with the voice because if i do a gesture most of people don't see this but newton i gesture while we podcast and that changes how we talk mm -hmm. it helps us bring our wor words across and yeah. that helps the voices and that's what you also can do and and sometimes <laughs> you, most of people dm sitting probably what mm -hmm. i sometimes do is for specific voices especially if the voices are off 
authoritarian, I stand up. Yeah. I am suddenly way taller than my players. And yes. that alone adds to the voice. Yeah, you just completely change your demeanor mm -hmm. of whatever you are portraying right or to whatever you are portraying right now. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. this leads to a change in your own voice completely naturally without you having to think about it. I mm -hmm. want to have that exact voice. Mm -hmm. If you stand up, puff your chest out and try to be as authoritarian as possible, you will sound more authoritarian mm -hmm. just because of the way your body is positioned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We talked about, once again, back to how to do voices because, right, this episode is how to do voices and all. But Nils, one thing we didn't talk about yet is when or where to do voices, actually, because you don't have to do voices for every character, right? For every, Especially for the farmer boy NPC that the players ask one, two questions, you don't need to create an elaborate voice. But where and when should you, if you can, if you feel comfortable, create a voice. I usually try to keep those distinct voices to reoccurring NPCs that the party will m at least more than once or twice will interact. Mm -hmm. Some sort of tavern keep that where the tavern functions as a home base for them right now or something along those lines. Any quest givers or major plot NPCs. I try to distinctly uh, or distinct mm. between their voices because they should know who they are talking to when mm. I use a specific voice. Mm. Yeah, especially important NPCs, right? Major NPCs. And for them, it's actually very easy to create a voice or at least to, to, to have an idea for a voice because you have a lot of information for them. So you have a lot of information on their character, their origins and everything we talked about so far that he helps you creating a voice for them. So everyone that you feel, okay, for this character, I can create a voice is probably a character for that you should create a voice if you feel comfortable doing so. Because all of these characters that, that you can create a voice for can have their own voice because they're probably interesting or important enough to have the voice. Right? Oh, yeah. The tavern keep on the roadside tavern that is still the, the unnamed roadside tavern won't be that important to your players that you probably don't have enough information on them to even create a voice aside from okay they're a little bit uh, grun grumpy and talk like this that's not interesting or important but that's okay because that character is throwaway he isn't that important and if he becomes important through whatever reason uh, in play or your characters or whatever then you can still create more of a voice yeah and think about the talk pattern that is something that can then later in influence the voice mm -hmm. because it's not the physical attributes or the things or not the the way they form their words but in what rhythm or what arrangement mm -hmm. this is something that you can differentiate between different voices with mm -hmm. Huh? Because it's it would be weird if you have a tavern keep that talks like this in this kind of low registry with a bit of resonance and blah 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 suddenly have a more high-pitched voice that wouldn't mm -hmm. work but you could later redefine or have them talk in a different demeanor sure yeah and i think that not mm, you shouldn't just think of every major npc to have a distinct voice mm -hmm. but sprinkle in some or some other non-important voices because then maybe the suspense will be gone because the players will know okay if the gm uses a different voice for this specific character this one will be very important even though they might mm -hmm. not seem that way with the facts we have mm -hmm. yeah that's very true right um one thing is <laughs> i don't know if there's a word for this but when you are comfortable creating the voices for the major NPCs, you have enough comfort to create the voices on the fly for throwaway NPCs as well. Yeah, because they don't need much thought. Yeah, you don't need much thought. You can just say, okay, basically in your head you go, I, I change this scale, this scale, this scale, and boom, I have a voice. Yeah. And then you have a voice, and then you use that voice to portray the character. And then that's very easy. So as soon as you have your voices for your major NPCs, you're probably comfortable enough with creating minor voices for minor NPCs. So I don't know if, if there's a word for this, like uh, you're comfortable comfortable enough with doing the thing on a large scale so you're also comfortable enough with doing the thing on a smaller scale because it's just the one thing you the thing you already do but way smaller and easier yeah and with way less impact on the final product and less effort yeah it's just yeah if i mess this voice up yeah what i mean whatever. who cares right it's, maybe my players get a laugh out of it maybe we get a laugh out of it. maybe the character becomes important because of this but still this can still be a thing and it's still okay yeah and what i like to use to warm up a bit mm -hmm. sometimes is to have especially after a tense couple of sessions is have a completely goofy voice that just throws off me my players and everyone 
everyone at the table to have a bit of comic relief mm. just to get in the mindset of having it or having to portray a different voice that it's not just all grim and dark mm -hmm. or you can switch this up as well or whatever it's yeah. just something i like to do one thing that when you're settling on a voice when you're finding a voice for a character you have the character prepared and we're like okay i need a voice for this queen hey, she's this she's this she has these character traits how do i portray this voice write yourself down a sentence or quote from this queen oh yeah generally for creating characters is for me or npcs is one advice i can already give for when we do an npc episode at, at some point create a quote from them or several of them sentences they would speak and make this a sentence that is at least seven words long so make it at least a bigger sentence not just i say so because that won't help you create a voice but if you have a longer sentence with by the name of queen justinia the third then you can create a voice with that because then you can say that <laughs> sentence thousand times with the different voices you have with the different voices you have as often as you like changing as often as you like till you have the thing you want to say and then say it at least 20 times more in the same voice that you think you found good because then you can actually then you have the voice internalized but create yeah. these sentences because it allows you to find the voice because if you're just going around your day and 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 uh, doing trying to find the voice with different sentences it might become way too flimsy for you and you will lose it as as soon as you start playing but as soon as you have found the voice with this one sentence for example another advice is to just do as much as you can with that voice before the game session yeah answer phone calls in the game session maybe not phone calls maybe, maybe especially don't risk your workplace over the voice of your characters but have con conversations with yourself talk in discord with your friends when gaming in the voice or whatever to get this voice down to to be comfortable with this voice to get this voice completely down for game session so you don't lose it. Yeah, and before uh, game when, session. Yeah, and when you have this voice figured out through the quotes, you automatically link the voice to the quote. Mm. And then it's just it becomes easier once you have internalized through the ways Emil just explained. It just becomes easier to connect those two quicker. You can just easily read the quote and just instantly remember and switch on the voice you want to hear for yeah. that special specific quote yeah yeah one last question i have for you niels mm -hmm. is one of the big problems that voices always have is how do i hold a voice or how do i remember a voice after the character has been gone for 10 to 20 sessions that's a tough one <laughs> <laughs> that, I know. that's a tough one especially for um player characters i think it's easier mm -hmm. because you know how you want to play your character and as we said personality and demeanor somehow influence voice yeah i also feel like for player characters since they only have to portray the one voice for every session consecutive session after the another it's very easy after they found their voice to remember the voice because they will do them so and so often yeah but especially for npcs how do i hold the voice well first of all it's okay to not hold the voice i can tell you from experience i had a character now this is also going into accents again but i had a character in my games a necromancer that had in the span of a complete conversation changed their voice three times because i was unable to hold the voice that i envisioned for them my players laughed i laughed but we all just agreed on that character still talks like i said that like the first voice but i just was unable to hold the voice yeah i mean we're playing make-believe so it, it's no big problem if you change your fucking voice multiple no. times in a no. conversation right it's i not. mean but are there still advice on how to do it it depends if you want to put in the work i usually write down every single tool that could be used to change your voice in the way i changed my voice for the character mm -hmm. so i write down if i have a higher pitch low pitch middle pitch mm -hmm. if i have a cold or a warmer voice if i speak more clearly with more energy or a lot more air pressed through there if i speak slowly or fast how loud i usually talk how much bite i will put into it what my rhythm would be and all of these single points i write down for mm -hmm. a specific voice but i only do that for very important voices mm -hmm. because it's a lot it takes a lot of time to set this up and mm -hmm. try it out one thing that i can say that makes this or what Niels just did way easier for people is record yourself in the voice make yourself a recording two to three minutes long of you holding that voice try your best to do it and then you have it okay i'm i'm saying this I'm, we might have an unfair advantage for this because our main instrument is our voice Mm -hmm. we, we need to have a voice to do this podcast as soon as Niels and I lose voice the podcast is over because we can't talk anymore right if one of us gets a sore throat and we can't record an episode for the week 
we have a problem. <laughs> yeah. But one of the things is that that also means what I learned through the one year of podcasting or the one and a few month years for podcasting now that I have a heightened sense now for voices and audio, right? Because mm. I trained myself to listen to myself, to listen to audio, to, to find the voice that I did last week for the episode as well, right? And how to play with my voice. Not necessarily for a character, but for a podcast. And listening to an audio recording of myself First of all, yes, people, your voice will feel uncomfortable to you. Every podcaster will tell you the same. The sound oh, of yeah. your voice annoys them at first. It gets better. Trust us. But when I listen to myself, I analyze my voice now. I just don't listen to it, to the words. I analyze how I speak. I analyze, do I articulate enough? Do I speak enough like this? And this process can be just as well done for voices. So I think maybe, yeah, podcasters have an unfair advantage. And singers, song. Uh, right? Everyone that uses their voice as their main instrument has probably an unfair advantage of listening to a recording of their own voice and analyzing what they did. Be it a voice, be it what they said, be it what they did and all of that stuff. But yeah, listen to yourself. Record yourself and listen to yourself will help you remember your voice. But you need to get comfortable with listening to yourself. That's yeah. the main problem in that. Yeah, and there we come back to training. It's all based on training. It's not something that just usually happens right from the get-go. Yeah. Once you listen, once twice 15 times to your voice there will be no problem for you anymore to listen to your voice any longer mm -hmm. but those first few times you want to turn that shit off every yeah. fucking time <laughs> it's it's just the way it is you won't be able to fight this i've never met a person that didn't like the sound of their voice at first sure i meet a lot of podcasters now that are very comfortable with their voice or at least as com comfortable enough to listen to themselves either in recordings or when editing or whatever they have their own tricks we talked about it in an episode with ali uh, that she just dissociate uh, dissociates and and just doesn't perceive it as her own voice mm -hmm. but it's still you figure there. out a way to do it you figure out a way to listen to your voice and yeah. you will have to do that as well if you want to record yourself listening to your voice so you can remember your voice for holding a voice is well what we what we said before we even asked the question is just practice the voice beforehand and uh, you will get comfortable with the voice you will hone in on the voice itself and then it will be way way easier to actually hold the voice but that's also practice right voices i feel are, are a thing of practice as most things are in gming people jamming is not a craft that people became that people had from the beginning everyone has makes mistake everyone starts somewhere and you will have to do the training yourself but hey we are here here to help you make this training easier. That's why you listen to Double DM. And with that, I think we're done for today's episode. Niels, why don't you conclude this episode a bit, give a summary, and then send us off for the rest. So we talked about voices. We told you or gave some tips on how you could change the voices you do, how you can get comfortable to do the voices that you want to do, how you can achieve those voices that you want to do, how you can hold them, and how you can find those voices. Mm -hmm. And I think with that, we are done for today. And as per usual, you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at DoubleDMPod. You can visit our website at www.doubledm.com. You can even donate to us on Ko-Fi if you would like so. And please, if you enjoy the show, give us a rating on the podcasting platform of your choice. And with that, thanks for listening. Hear you on the next one and bye-bye. Bye-bye, people.